the third mini quiz to test our understanding so far. A of Mumbai sold goods to B of Delhi. The goods are to be sold at 125% of cost, which is invoice price. Commission 10% on sales at invoice price and 25% of any surplus realized above invoice price. 10% of the goods sent out on consignment. Invoice value of which is 12,500 were destroyed. 75% of the total consignment is sold by B at rupees 1 lakh. What will be the amount of commission payable to E? <coughs> A. 10,937.50 B. 10,000 C. 9,000 and D. 9,700 I'll give you a minute to solve. But in a question like this, Concentrate on the actual question, what will be the amount of commission payable to be? Commission. What is the amount of commission payable? Let's see what would be the correct answer. Commission is 10% on sales at invoice price, 25% on any surplus above invoice price. Now neither do we know the cost of the goods nor do we know the invoice price of the goods. What is the hint given to us that 10% of the goods sent out on consignment in invoice value of which is 12,500 were destroyed. So basically we know if the total value of goods is x, then 10% of x is equal to 12,500 or x that is the total value of goods. If we solve, we will get 1,25,000. So total value of the goods, total invoice price of the goods is 1,25,000. Next. 75% of the consignment is sold by B for rupees 1 lakh. And how do you pay commission? You pay commission as 10% on sales at invoice price, 25% of any surplus above invoice price. So let us see at invoice price, 75% of the total value, 1 lakh 25,000 at invoice price is sold. So what is the sale? If we take, we get 75% of 0.75 into 1,25,000 giving us 93,750. This is what? This is sales at invoice price. Sales at invoice price. But what is the actual sale? Actual sale is 1 lakh. This is actual sale. Therefore, the difference of 6250, what is this? This is the surplus. Right? So, what is the commission? Commission is equal to 10%. Commission is 10% of Sales at invoice price, that is 10% of 93,750, 9,375 and we have 25% of the surplus, therefore 25% of 6,250 which is equal to 1 fourth of 6,250 giving us 1,562.50. Totally. 10,937.50. Therefore, correct answer should be A, 10,937.50. <clears throat> Next, X consigns 500 bags to Y costing 800 each at an invoice price of 1,000 each. 
consignors expenses 8000 consignees non selling expenses 2000 selling expenses 4000 400 bags are sold amount of stock reserve what is stock reserve the amount of loading in the closing stock the amount of stock reserve will be a 10000 b nil c 20000 d 2400 so compute the closing stock at invoice price and then find out the amount of loading the loading on the closing stock would be the stock reserve give you 30 seconds so what do we have 500 bags to buy were costing 800 each invoice price of 1000 each so what is the loading the loading is 1000 minus 800 equal to 200 per bag what is the loading 200 per bag consignors expenses are 8000 consignees non selling expenses are 2000 selling expenses 4000 400 bags are sold the amount of stock reserve so amount of stock closing stock is 100 bags the loading on 100 bags would be 100 into 200 equal to 20000 this is your loading while they have not asked us to find out the value of consignment stock we can straight away compute the stock reserve since we know 200 is the since we know 200 is the loading on each bag therefore 200 into 100 20000 should be the load so correct answer is c 20000 x of kolkata purchased 1000 boxes costing 100 each 200 boxes were sent out to buy of delhi at cost plus 25% 600 boxes were sold at 120 each the amount of gross profit to be recorded in general trading account would be a 12000 b 17000 c a loss of 3000 and d none of the above mind you the question is gross profit to be recorded in the general trading account so what is there in the general trading account he purchased 1000 200 boxes were sent out so only 600 boxes were sold 600 boxes are sold at 120 the cost is 100 therefore gross profit should be 120 minus 100 per box into how many boxes sold 600 boxes sold 20 into 600 is equal to 12000 correct answer should be a 12000 next which of the following items is not credited to consignment account a cash sales made by consignee b credit sales made by consignee c consignment stock d stock reserve on closing consignment stock which of the following items is not credited to consignment account sales whether cash or credit is definitely credited to the consignment account consignment stock also comes on the credit side of consignment stock so it is stock reserve which is not credited to consignment account what is our entry for stock reserve consignment account debit to stock reserve therefore the correct answer in this case would be option d stock reserve on closing consignment stock is debited to the consignment account not credited to consignment account next 1000 kg of a fruit are consigned to a wholesaler the cost being 30 per kg plus 4000 of freight it is known that a loss of 20% is unavoidable 
what would be the cost per kg? Is it A50, B30, C34 and D42.50? What is the cost? You have 1000 kg. The cost is 30 per kg or 30,000 is total cost. Then we have a freight of 34,000 so that you have a total cost of 34,000 but there is a 20% unavoidable loss or normal loss 20% 200. Therefore, 800 kgs cost 30. 4,000. Therefore, what is 1 kg cost? 34,000 divided by 800. Therefore, 42.50 D should be the correct answer. 42.50. <coughs> Next, Rahim of Kolkata sends out 1000 boxes to Ram of Delhi costing 100 each at an invoice price of 120 each. Goods sent out on consignment to be credited in the general trading account would be A. 1 lakh, B. 1 lakh 20, C. 20,000 and D. 9. So finally, what happens when goods are sent on consignment? Consignment account debit to goods sent on consignment at the invoice price. But again, while closing the consignment account, what do we do? We reverse the entry with the amount of loading. So ultimately, the consignment, the goods sent on consignment, which is taken to the general trading account will be will be the cost of the goods sent on consignment. So it would be 1000 boxes into 100 equal to 1 lakh. Correct answer should be A, 1 lakh. <coughs> X of Kolkata sent out 1000 bags to Y of Delhi costing 200 each. Consigner's expenses 2000. Wise expenses, non-selling, 1,000, selling, 2,000. 100 bags were lost in transit. Value of lost in transit would be A, 2,200, B, 2,300, C, 20,000 and D, 23,000. So you have 100 bags, 1000 bags are sold. Let's see, bags, 1000 bags per unit cost 200. Therefore, total cost is 2 lakh. Next, consignors' expenses are 2000. 2000 on 1000 bags, therefore, it's rupees 2 per bag. So what is the total cost? 2,2,000. 202. This is the 202 is the cost per bag. Total cost for 1000 bags is 202,000. Assuming that these 100 bags are lost in transit, therefore they were lost when goods were sent from Kolkata to Delhi. How many bags? 100 bags. One bag costs 202. 100 bags will cost... 100 into 202, 20,200. Correct answer should be A, 20,200. The abnormal loss on consignment account is credited to A, consignment account, B, profit and loss account, 
C. Consignee's personal account. D. All of the above. Abnormal loss on consignment is credited to. Entry for abnormal loss. Abnormal loss account debit to consignment. Therefore, it is credited to consignment account. Correct answer. Option A. Consignment account. Next. What entry is required to be passed to nullify the effect of loading? A. Goods sent on consignment account debit to trading account. B. Goods sent on consignment account to consignment account. C. Consignment account debit to goods sent on consignment account. And D. None of the above. When goods are sent on consignment, we pass the entry consignment to goods sent on consignment. To nullify the effect of loading, we say goods sent on consignment account debit to consignment. Therefore, the correct answer should be option B. Option B. Next. 